one more time. Everybody lay a hand on your heart and say, keep your hand. Lord God, we 
thank you for our pastor. We thank you for his wife. We thank you for the founder. We ask that you preserve them and keep them covered from under your blood. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we give our man of God back to you. We ask that you stretch the man of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't lie in his love, but strengthen his back in the name of Jesus. Let him not leave the pulpit weak. Let him not be tired, but he never right here. Jesus, let them stand flat but then declare the works of the Lord. And Lord God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you shake this place like no other. We decree and declare that everyone will be healed. We decree and declare that everyone will be delivered. We decree and declare that there will be a sign of liberty and freedom in this place in the name of Jesus. For those that are watching, we declare healing. We declare deliverance. We declare freedom in the name of Jesus. Lord God, leave no place uncovered. Leave no place vacant. And we'll be so ever careful to give your name the glory, to give your name the honor, to give your name the praise. And if you believe it, open up your mouth and shout like it's already, like it's already, like it's already, like all is well, and it will be alright. Shout like all is well, and it will be alright. Shout like all is well, and it will be alright. And it will be, and it will be, and it will be, and it will be. And it will be. It will be. That's what the restoration is.
that I help this, I gotta help somebody. I'm gonna tell somebody in your ear, tell them one thing God did for you. Watch this just this morning. Tell them one thing God did for you just this morning. Then he picked me up and he turned me all around. He placed my feet on a higher ground. And that's why I love the praise I love to praise his holy name. Amen. God bless you. We welcome you in the sacred place that we call sanctuary. Where God is exalted, the devil is defeated, and we have the victory. Oh, my, my, my. If you're going through anything right now, I want you to speak victory in your atmosphere. Just lift up that hand and say, I still have the victory. Come on. Scream all the way down the Lord and say, we still got it. I'm gonna tell somebody who still. Somebody ought to be happy just to be alive. A million did make it. But yeah, I was one of the ones. Oh, my, my, my. I put them in there and gone. Sleeping in my grave. But God told death, you gotta be happy. And I am a living just a moment. And you don't know like I know. There's one thing I'm for me. Yeah. You don't know, Rebecca. I said, you don't know like I know. I see your hands with the person. What he got for me? Yeah. Come on, clap your hand, brother there. You can't tell me, let me tell it. What it comes to me? Hey! You just don't know! You just don't know! What it comes to me? This is glory! What? I can get happy by myself! Come on, Rebecca! Because you just don't know! Please could have gone another way! I wish I had five people who would testify! Please could have gone another way! So you can't tell it. I gotta tell my own testimony. You don't know like I know. What he done for me? Hey, you don't know like I know. What he done for me? Hey, well he healed my body. That's what he done for me. He saved my soul. That's what he's done for me. I want you to tell you, baby, that's what he's done. That's what he's done. Come on, tell him, that's what he's done. I don't need to articulate it, but that's what he's done. That's what he's done. Tell the hearts, that's what he's done. Oh, tell that's what he's done. Oh, my God. I get joy. When I think about what he done for me, I get joy. When I think about it, what he done for me, oh, glory, yeah. I need somebody to shout, yeah, yes, yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, everything. My soul. Say it again. Oh. Testimony. You might wish out with me, but yes, Lord, I am. Some stuff I got to 
keep to myself, but I just want you to know that's what he done for me. My God, my God. Oh, uh, yes. We gonna go ahead and die. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Oh, my
to hear what I'm feeling. If it's not for you, it's for somebody you know. He's awakening. Yeah, the Spirit is speaking to the church right now. He's awakening. God will make a way. Yes. Out of no way. Yes. Oh, yes. I, I said, God will make a way. Oh, my God. You'll make a way. Oh, yes. God will Away. I want you to tell on five people. I want you to get five people. Just tell on five people. You got to get out of and see. I want you to tell on five people. God will make away. Yes. Oh, yes. Come on, tell. God will. You don't know who needs that right now. He will make away. Oh, yes. Because he is the king of it is. Oh my soul. God Lord. Yes, Lord. I said, God will. God will make a way. You have no idea what the person you just edified right now, you have absolutely no idea. But God will make a way. I said, God will. Brandon, he going to do it. God will make a way. Oh, yes. How do you know what it costs? He is the people. Oh,
way. Dr. Queen, he's gonna make a way. Brother Benny, God will make a way. Yes, he's going to make a way. I know I know it other the bars because he is the kingdom of my soul. Make it glory. Yeah. Oh, oh. For the love of glory, Dr. Myra C. Warner. Bless God for our mother. Thank God for our ministerial staff, for our families, our deacons, our missionaries, evangelists, mothers, prayer warriors, saints, and friends. Even in this healing moment, I need everybody to lay hand on yourself and declare it out loud. I am somebody. I am important. And there is nothing that anybody can tell me before. Yes, you are important. And we love you. And we need you to survive. Yes. The Bible is open to John's Gospel, chapter 2. Bless God for my precious wife. Thank you, wonderful wife. Takes real good care. Thank God for our ministry, our music ministry, singing so wonderful, so skillful. John's Gospel. 
chapter 20. Amen. Verse number 26 says, And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here, and look at my hands, and reach your hand here, and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. You may be seated in the presence of our conquering King. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet They would take 
the film and put it in an envelope. And then they would write your name on it. All right. And what was really important was that the film, once you took it out of the camera, was no longer the film. Now, Melinda, it is called negatives. You had to take the negatives, I want to walk with you, come on here, and, and put your name on the negatives. Right? And therefore, now I have taken ownership to the thing not yet produced. And by faith, you didn't realize we were using faith. You had to leave your negatives with somebody you didn't even know. By faith, I'm showing you how the faith works. You had to believe that they were going to do something with your negatives that had my name on it. And so the next time you came to get your negatives with your name on it, here's the good part. They now look different. But I found out, I found out that um, in shop class, they took it out of the schools. But I learned in shop class that negatives go through a process. That in order to work on your negatives, we had to go into a dark room. And God began to speak to me that when it is that you are facing a negative situation in your life, that you cannot process by yourself. What God will do for us is that he will lock us in a dark room. And it looks like you can't see anything. I'm not making progress. Nothing seems to be happening for me. And then God will lock the door so that people who are not qualified can't walk into your negative situation. Because now it's just you and God in your negative circumstance. So what I learned is that you place negatives in a tray and use a chemical that simply said solution. God help me. I have your attention. So, so we will put negatives in a solution in a dark room where nobody could see. And you don't even know what the solution is. All you know is that when you come out of it, it's already fixed. And I came to tell a few of y'all who would shout with me that your stuff that was in a dark room, God today is now dipping it in solution. That by the time we dismiss today, you're going to be able to see some things clearer. Please hear what I'm saying. You'll notice that nothing can go into a dark room. And all that is on in the dark room is what they call a red light. And the red light is very critical because the red light is a symbol, a metaphor for the blood. And sometimes when you are in a dark situation and the only solution that you have is to know that I am covered by the blood. And you see, I know that I am a part of the Neo-Pentecostal generation where we shout about cars, clothes, and money. But I hope y'all don't leave me out here by myself. 
But I grew up in a stage in the era where we went to church and we would plead the blood of Jesus. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. And some of you don't know what it's like to be able to shout simply because of the blood. Oh, God. And we don't sing songs like that anymore because if he never does anything else, hallelujah, just because he died for me, that's enough. And I don't know if anybody else knows that feeling, but yes, life now is sweet. And my joy is complete because I'm saved. Yeah, I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved. Y'all stay with me right here because it's very critical here is when you went back to, to pick up your negatives. And they said because you have trusted your negatives with us, because you turned your negatives over to us without knowing the process, Here's my shout. What we're going to do for you is we're going to give you double exposure. And I can't tell the eight of y'all who will shout with the pastor if some things have been negative for you this year. This is our month for doubling up. And God is going to give you what you have prayed about in secret. And what you're going to get this month, God is going to give it to you more abundantly. And to lean over and tell the neighbor, get ready for the overflow. Oh God. You might need to turn around and tell somebody, just say more abundantly. Tell more. You don't know what they mean, but it's coming more. More. I'm talking more. And now when they gave you the pictures, the proof, watch this, the proof that they gave you the right pictures is that they gave you your negatives back. But what we notice is that the negatives don't look like the picture. Why, Pastor? Because the negatives are dark. The negatives are blurry. And it's not until you hold the negatives up to the light that you can see the image of your pictures. And those who can receive what I'm telling you right now, what you're looking at right now is not pictures. It's just the negatives. But if you hold your situation up to the light, God heal me. You'll understand that greater is getting ready to come. And I'm telling somebody, please, ma'am, please, sir, don't think based off of what you're dealing with now. Because where you are now is not your last stop. Your best job hasn't come yet. Your next car is not even off the assembly line. Your next house hasn't even been built for you yet. The person who you are supposed to marry isn't even in your life yet. God help me. And God says you're just looking at negative. But he's getting ready to show me what my blessing is going to look like. And some of us operate at a different level of faith because somebody on your road can't shout because they are looking at negatives. But if in this moment God just gave you a glimpse of what your future is going to look like. Would you open up your mouth and give him glory right now? Like God is going to do something amazing in my life. And I need you to shout like the best is yet to come.
Glory be to God. And in dealing with the context of the text, you'll notice that Jesus has already been crucified. I told you before. And because he's already been crucified, the disciples are now running around trying to figure out what it is that they're supposed to be doing. And they're now in a room together because a few days earlier, Jesus had shown himself to them. But Thomas wasn't there. He had missed what he assumed was his opportunity. And um, now I have some concerns about Tom. I'm a little concerned about Tom because um, he wasn't there at the first board meeting. But I believe that Thomas has gotten a bad reputation in the minds of most people um, because we, some kind of way, we only want to attach to his name, doubting. And, uh, and because most of us stop at Sunday school, you don't go a little bit further with it. And, and so we'll preach about doubting tongues. And you ain't studied. Right? That's the only thing you want to focus on. Doubting. And I think it's unfair. I need the Bible scholars to come with me. Preachers, I need you to come with me. Because it is unfair to always call him Doubting Thomas. It's unfair. And what if people only called you by what they thought about you? God help me. In your moment of despair, People begin to label you by your one moment. How would it make you feel? And, and so I want to open up the book to let you know that um, it's unfair because we only talk about him being doubted. But it was just a few verses back that, watch this, the other disciples thought that Jesus was a ghost. Yeah. Isn't it funny? how people very quickly forget where they came from. Y'all are not going with the pastor. And we, we don't want to visit that dilemma. And so for 40 seconds, I want to defend Brother Tom. I, I got to defend him because we have to do the text due diligence. Maybe, y'all, um, I can defend Thomas because maybe I am one of the few people who will admit that I too have had a moment of doubt. Yeah, we won't shout in church. God help me. And so because I'm one of the few people who will admit that I had a doubt moment, um, when I looked at the text this time, I read it closer and I was reminded that we hardly ever preach this. And yet what is more exposing to us as believers, what do we need to be strengthened more than our faith? Why? Because without it, the Bible says it's impossible to please God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Y'all read it. And the devil, can I tell you, is not after our material stuff. He's trying to convince you that God doesn't care. That God is not listening. And that God does not love you. And the devil is trying to convince you that you are not really saved anyway. So he's going to try to make you give up. But President Obama, in his book, The Audacity of Hope, he puts it this way. The presence of faith does not mean the absence of doubt. We can debate that some other time. But what I do know 
is that when Jesus got ready to raise Lazarus from the dead, in case y'all missed it in the Bible, it was Thomas that said, we must go and die with him. Because Thomas knew that people had Jesus on the hit list. And Thomas was the first disciple to say, if my Lord is going to die, I'm going to die with him. Hmm. It was Thomas we forgot who said, Lord, if you're going away, show us the way. Hmm. We forgot that Thomas was a good man in a bad situation. And now he's just come to the point in his life that he's ready to walk away. But the Bible records for us that just eight days later, the thing that he missed, now he finally sees it. We got to understand by now that eight signifies resurrection. Eight signifies regeneration. It is the number of a new beginning. And I'm getting ready to go because I'm here on my assignment to tell somebody in this room. I'm telling you, look for something amazing in eight days. That by this time next week, what you have been looking for God to do within eight days, you're going to see it manifest right before your eyes. And I don't know how many of us have that type of faith, but can I tell you, that bill can get paid in eight days. Your relationship can get stronger in eight days. The deal you need to happen will be confirmed in eight days. Can I tell somebody? Healing will come in your body in eight days. And somebody didn't believe it on your own, but by faith, there's somebody here who believes that God is going to do something amazing in my life. Somebody holler eight days. I dare you just to shout out loud, Lord, I know you can do it in eight days. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, just find me in eight days. Find me. And see if I don't have a different testimony. Hallelujah. I'm going to add to my testimony in eight days. Yes, Lord. Elder Malone, I'm going to call you and tell you about it in eight days. Glory be to God. Oh, my. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I feel that reverberating in the atmosphere. Now, some of us need regeneration. We, we need resurrection. And I'm telling you, in eight days, something amazing in eight days. And if you have that kind of faith, the last person you talk to in your phone, but that's how we communicate, I want you to simply text them right now and just say eight days. That's all you got to put on there, eight days. Because yeah. I don't want to go by myself. I want to pull everybody connected to me in eight days. And so Jesus shows up, Brother Tim, in eight days later. I'm in verse number 26. I crawled into my text. And he shows up, the Bible says, let me hurry up, to a locked door. Watch the text. The door is shut. And he shows up and he can't even get in because the Bible says that the door is shut. I want you to see. It. The door is shut. And he can't get in. The door is shut. And so I need to tell somebody in the house today that the first evidence of the proof that you need that God is on your side is, hear me closely, that you are getting ready to walk through stuff that used to stop you. Somebody missed it. You're getting ready to walk through stuff 
that used to block you. And I don't care how hard some people tried to stop you. I don't care who tried to put a stumbling block in your way. The anointing on your life is so heavy that no matter what they use to try to stop you, you better look the devil in the face and say, no weapon. I'm trying to find you. No weapon that is formed against me shall be able to prosper. Somebody holler, it won't work. I said, somebody holler, it won't work. I said, somebody holler, it won't work. Turn your volume up and shout, it won't work. It's not going to work. Watch the text. The door is locked. And seemingly, logically, Jesus should not be able to get in. I want y'all to watch the text because when I looked at it closer, there is no evidence that he knocked. There is no evidence in your Bible that he rang the doorbell. There is no evidence that he had the key. But verse 26 of John, chapter 20 says, the door was shut, but right after that, Jesus came through. Watch the text. And, and it says then to our reasonable, rational logic that Jesus came through the door. And so Jesus has now defied the second law of thermodynamics. Because the second law of thermodynamics is that energy is not created nor destroyed. It changes. It changes form. Let me see if I can help you. I lost a few people. So because he is matter, he is all divine and he's human. So he had to defy the law of thermodynamics so that either he had to go under the door or he had to go over the door or he went through the door mm. and so I need to tell somebody in here that the situation that you are facing right now you're not going to go over it you're not going under it but God is going to give you the power to go through it. Somebody holler out loud, I'm going through it. Now the problem is, I need somebody to fix it, but the problem is uh, that in the realm of thermodynamics is that the body has two options. Body had to either decompose on one side of the door and then on the other side of the door, recompose. And many of us are going through something that is so critical that when you go through it, there is no way that you can go through that and not change. So you're going through something right now that is going to change you. Not, I need to help you shout, not make you bitter, but it's going to change you for the better. Lay hand on your arms and say, I'm going to get better. And now we understand the situation that we are dealing with is going to put you at such a different level that it won't even matter to you. It won't matter no more who likes me. It won't matter anymore who does not speak to me. I need you to fix it. It doesn't matter if you don't want to go to eat with me. I can take myself out anyway. Because some of us have learned I don't always need to be in no crowd. I can shout by myself. And if there's one person on every row 
who has gone through something that has changed you, but you are now better because of it. Would you just give a praise right now? Because what I went through, it changed. It changed me. A wonderful change. Would you just lean over and tell your neighbor, a wonderful change, change has come over. Come over me. So he, he walks through something that should have stopped him. And the second proof that God is with us, please hear me, is when you find the strength to do more with less. You don't have all the resources and support you need, but people who are watching you, they can't tell. Mm. And I'm talking to somebody in here. You had to endure a hard season. But you are looking just as fabulous as you want to be. God help me. And people have no idea that sometimes you don't even know what day it is. But God's grace it is, is sufficient for me. And here's how we know that God is with us, Sister Sarah, because we can do more with less. And this is how much faith you have, because you had to nerve with what seemed to be your last little bit to allow your managerial skills to kick in. What do you say, Pastor? Moving stuff over here. Moving stuff over there. To signify to the world, to myself, and to my enemies uh -huh, that if I have to, I can survive on a wing and a prayer. Oh, yeah. You gonna tell the devil, yeah, didn't I tell you? With God, I can do all things. And I'm gonna survive in the middle of my rough season. And you gotta tell the devil, take that and rewind it back again. Because watch what God will do with the favor that is on my life. And somebody ought to shout right now, he will supply. Anybody know that he will? Anybody know him to be Jehovah Jireh? I want you to rip that hand up and say, he will supply. Yeah. People have been waiting for you to fail, but your testimony is he will supply. Mm, all of them. Not just one of them, but all of my needs. And if we be honest in the sanctuary, some of us don't even know how we made it to April. Oh, oh God. Because if you look at my finances and my bills, I've been moving stuff around. I can look back and say, look what the Lord has done. God help me. You have no idea the person on your road what they are struggling with. Would you just testify to somebody and say, I absolutely don't look like what I am going through. Oh, I don't. I don't. You think you know, but you don't know. And so, yes, you have the ability to do more with less. And then um, Brother Tom says, I'm not going to believe it until I touch his hand. And you know by now that theologically, historians have noted that when Jesus was crucified, in actuality, the nine inch nails never went through his hands, but they were driven through his wrists. All right, come closer because. So Thomas is saying, I want to touch his hands because he thinks, watch this, he thinks that his pain is in one area, but in actuality, it's in another area. Can we shout it here because many people think that they know what it is that you are going through. Come on, Bishop. God 
bless all of us so many times. Bless your precious heart. And, and people assume that they know your struggle. But your pain is really in a different area. And aren't you tired of people telling you, get over it? God help me. Aren't you tired of folks saying it gonna take all of that shouting and dancing? How you gonna tell me? I, I said, how are you gonna tell me when you don't really know the pain that I have to endure? And I'm talking to the people in here. Yeah, you had to stay up all night. Had to get up and pace the floor sometime. Had to call on Jesus in the midnight hour. Can I help some people in here? Because they don't know your story. Some days you had to drive past your own house. Sometimes I was crying while I was sitting in my car. And people think that they know your pain. Would you just tell your neighbor, you have no idea. You really don't know the area of my pain. I want to touch him in one area, but that is not the area of the pain. And this is not for everybody, but just for a few of us in the room. Can I tell you that God is pleased with you. Let me say it again. God is pleased with you. I'm trying to find the rest of y'all. I said God is pleased with you. Because you have shown the world and you, the devil how to suffer with class. God is pleased with you. You ought to wrap your own self up and say, God is pleased with me. That even though people or something has hurt you, you're never going to give them the pleasure of knowing how bad you have been hurt. I am not going to cry in front of you. I'm not going to act like I got an attitude when I see you. And when I do see you, I'm not going to walk by you and not speak. I'm going to speak to you. Because you've been waiting on my demise. I'm going to look you in the face and say, how you doing? How is your family? Is everybody all right? Because I've learned, Thelma Lou, I've learned that if you suffer with it, You'll rain. Oh, God. I thought we shout better than that. You don't want to identify yourself in the sanctuary. I got it. You don't want people to know that there's some folks waiting for you to fall apart. Uh, watch this. By what they did to you. And you standing flat footed saying, look at what the Lord has done. You silly rabbit tricks of the kids. God help me to be I can't find help. Come on, help me to get back. They ran off and left the pastor. Yeah, I learned how to suffer with class. And so they think that your pain is in one area, but it's really in another. So when somebody is going forth in a praise, can I help y'all in church? Please stop critiquing them. I talk about myself. I don't need you rubbing my back. I don't need no water. I don't need no mint. Don't try to drag me out the sanctuary. I'm just praising God through my pain. And as a matter of fact, just maybe we ought to question the people who don't have a praise. We ought to question you, but, but let the people that want to praise God, let them do whatever they got to do. Because it, it's this way 
This is how I get relief from my pain. Is there anybody who know how to praise God in pain? Would you lean over and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, this is how I get relief from my pain. So don't talk about me, just dance with me. Don't run outside and tell folk how ridiculous I was. Just shout with me. Oh, God. I'm preaching. And, and so when they drove the nail through his wrist, it severed, Dr. Queen, you can help me, it severed the metacarpal nerve. And the metacarpal nerve is critical because if it gets damaged, it cuts off feelings. And, um, and can I tell you, yes, thank you, mothers. Y'all are so sweet. Thank you. They stand up with the pastor. And, and can I tell you is that um, what the enemy is trying to do with you, he's trying to make you lose nerve. Found somebody. The enemy is trying to take away your feelings. And the metacarpal nerve was severed when they drove the nail into Jesus' wrist. And the reason why this is so critical is because it blocks the body from having the ability to reach out. So stay with me. Because when that nerve is cut off, it can no longer reach out. So here's what's crazy. Is Jesus walks through the door and Tom is thinking, I'm not going to believe until I can touch his hands. So watch what the first thing Jesus does. He reaches out. And he said, see my hands? And automatically, he should not be able to reach out because of the pain that he has been through. And because many of y'all don't really know me well, I'm reaching out. Because you have no idea the actual area of my pain. Shell, I'm going to reach out. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I know how to get healed. I'm going to reach out. Yeah, he shouldn't have been able to reach out. Uh -huh. Because, and now God says, this is when I bless you the most. Come on, get the people, God. Is when you learn how to reach out. When you are going through pain. Would you lean over and edify your neighbor? And say, neighbor, this shout is for you. And I'm getting ready to reach out and give God a shout on your behalf. That God will give you the desires of your heart. And I want you to elbow your neighbor and say, it's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. God is going to give you trouble for your trouble. You ought to just reach out. I said, you ought to just reach out. Reach out and tell your neighbor, say, baby, in just a minute, I'm going to reach out to you. And I'm going to praise God on your behalf. Because I know how to reach out when I'm in pain. And so when they drove the nail through his wrist, they severed the metacarpal nerve. He couldn't reach out, and because he couldn't reach out, while Jesus was being crucified, it hindered him from pulling himself up. Because if he just kept falling while he was hanging on the cross, he would die quicker. But every hour, he wasn't supposed to be able to do it. But every hour, he keeps pulling himself up. And the 
Lord told me to tell somebody in the room. In this season of your life, stop waiting for somebody to do it for you. Yes, sir. But you got to encourage yourself. That you got to learn how to pull yourself up and tell yourself, I'm getting out of this messed up situation. I am not going to be depressed. I am not going to stay sick. I am not going to let my emotions get the best of me. Right now, I'm going to pull myself up. Oh, God. Somebody scream out loud. I'm pulling myself up. I'm pulling myself up. So to try to accelerate the death of Jesus, what they did ordinarily in Roman customs, what they did, we talked about it, is they, they broke their legs so that they could not pull themselves up. And here's what I don't want us to try by too fast, is that they went to break his legs, but instead of breaking his legs, they pierced him in his side. And I'm going to say to somebody in here that the enemy thought that he was going to break you. thought he was going to break you, but all he did was pierce Come on, Bishop. you. And so there are some things that you have gone through that regular, ordinary people would have broken from it. And can I shout y'all in here because people are looking at you, even in the sanctuary, and have no idea what you have survived. And the reality is, some of us in the room ought to just go up in a praise simply because I still got my right mind. Oh God, I thought we shot down. Because what you have been through, you should have gone cuckoo for cocoa press. But you're able to say, I got up this morning with my mind, and I can testify that thou will keep me in perfect peace. Whose mind is standing on me. Amen. Somebody ought to shout for you right now. Oh my God. I said, somebody ought to shout for you right now. Oh God, we ain't over to tell your neighbor, I'm glad I'm still in my right mind. Oh God, they didn't shout with you. Somebody type it in the comments, I'm so glad I'm still in my right mind. And so they, they pierce him inside. It was the enemy's intent to break him, but they only pierced him. And now they pierced him in an angular direction by which they broke open the pericardium sac. Use word, you know, so the pericardium sac is the sac that is around your heart. Yeah. And the writers of the gospel said that when they pierced him in the side, the proof that this is the pericardium sac is that blood and water begin to come out. So you got to understand, watch this, you might not shout. You got to understand that in this moment, Jesus died with a broken heart. <laughs> and let me see if I can help somebody in here. Because the, where the enemy tried to mess with you is that he tries to make you stay in a place where your heart is broken. And because somebody or something broke your heart, it is now hard for you to trust again. But what's amazing about Jesus is that even though his heart was broken, his love is still intact. 
And so, um, for those of us who are not self-righteous, we are able to say, I don't know why Jesus loves me. And I don't know why he cares. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. Oh, but I'm so glad. Yeah, glory. I'm glad he did. And in spite of all of that, Jesus loves me. And so watch what he does. He, he then tells Tom, he says, put your hand in my side. And in other words, he's telling Thomas, you have my permission to touch my broken heart. And this messed me up because he pulls out and out of the side of Jesus. And the Bible says that Thomas began, yeah, he begins to worship. He says, my Lord and my God. And what you have to see is, is that he begins worshiping him with blood on his hands. And why is this so significant? Is because the blood still works. And I want you to lean over and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, the blood still works. And I found out that what can wash away my sins, it is nothing but the blood of Jesus. What oh, can make me whole again? It is nothing. Yeah, but the blood of Jesus. Somebody lean over and tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, look at me. I am evidence that the blood still works. I know it works because it raised me. Come on, help on somebody and say, I know it works because it saved me. Say, neighbor, so many people doubt it, but I can't live without it. And that is why I love him so, because he's so real. He's real to me. He's so real. I can feel him in my hand. He's so real. I can feel in my feet. He's so real. I can feel him all over me. And every time I turn around, the Lord, he keeps on blessing me. He keeps on doing great things for me. I want you to lift that hand up.
faith enough to believe, he gonna show up.
what do you mean? So even if I messed up, if I made my bed in hell, he'll still show up and show out and pick me up, turn me around. Because no matter what I'm going through, he going to show up. And if you need God to show up within the next eight days, I want you to tell the neighbor, say, neighbor, be not dismayed. Whatever we tell, God will take care of you. And I want you to shout for your neighbor, knowing that they're going to look differently in eight days. I want you to shout for somebody.